Welcome to our next video. We're talking about Markowitz portfolio theory. We're talking about covariance. As you remember, Markowitz portfolio theory consists of calculating, computing expected values and of course variances and standard deviations. So now we want to take a look at how they're related together, of how they are related and thus want to compute covariance. Covariance indicates um, if one share rises, what does the other share do? That's important to understand, which means the only thing we need to know, we need to, to know is whether it is positive or negative. The number itself, let it be plus 5 or plus 10 or plus 12, is not that important for us. It is just important to understand whether it is positive or negative. That's first to understand. Now, take a look at this example again. We have two different shares with um, three different situations for every single share. 1%, 2% or 6% for share A and share B, 2 or 4 or 6%. Now, formula for covariance is this, 1 divided by n minus 1 times this sum. And which means that we first have to compute the expected value. Expected value for share A, for example, is, as we see, 1 plus 2 plus 6 is equal to 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So 3% is the expected value. As we subtract 3%, we get 1 minus 3 equal to minus 2. 2 minus 3 equal to minus 1. And 6 minus 3 is equal to 3. So, then, next step is to calculate the squares. Is to calculate the squares of every single difference. Minus 2 times minus 2 is equal to plus 4. Minus 1 times minus 1 is equal to plus 1. 3 times 3 is equal to 9. And then, <coughs> we don't need to calculate the variance, but as we, if we like to compute the variance, we would just sum those numbers, sum up those numbers, but here we just want to calculate the, the covariance and not the variance. So let us just go on. Let us just go on and look at share B. Share B, 2 and 4 and 6. The, the expected value, 2 plus 4 plus 6 is equal to 12. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So 2 minus expected value, 2 minus 4 is equal to minus 2. 4 minus 4 is equal to 0. 6 minus 4 is equal to 2. And that's important because the formula tells us we need to multiply. We need to multiply the differences. We need to multiply the deviations. So that's what we do. That's what we do. We need to multiply this number with this number. Those are the deviations, those are the differences. Minus 2 times minus 2 is equal to 4. So is this. Minus 1 times 0 is 0. My, uh, plus 3 times plus 2 is equal to 6. So those are the products. Those are the products of the deviations and we need to sum them up. 4 plus 0 plus 6 is equal to 10 giving us 10 divided by 3 minus 1, 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5, is equal to, very important, plus 5. That's important. We don't look at the number, we just look at the sign, whether it is positive or negative. Because if it is positive, the following holds true. If the covariance is strictly superior to zero, then we have this, we have this. If the return, if the return of share A rises, so does the return of share B, right? If the covariance, again, if the covariance is strictly superior to zero, then the returns of both shares rise 
or fall. They move into the same direction. They move into the same direction if and only if the covariance is strictly superior to zero. Very important to keep this in mind. Which means, if share A rises, so does share B. If share A gets down, so does share B. Right? So they move into the same direction, this way or this way. If the covariance is strictly inferior to zero, they move in different directions. They move in different directions. This way, A goes up, whereas B goes down. Or A goes down and B goes up, if and only if the covariance is strictly inferior to zero. And if it is zero, they are not correlated, they are uncorrelated, so there's no linear relationship, no linear relationship between the two of them. That's important for you to understand. And why don't we look at this, at this number? There is one reason. There is one reason. Because it can take any number. It can be plus 5, it can be plus 18, it can also be plus 741, I don't know. There is no upper bound. There is no upper bound for covariance. And that's the reason why we compute the correlation coefficient, which will be done in a different video. Because the correlation coefficient has an upper bound of plus 1, but the covariance has not. And that's why we only take a look at the sign and not at the number. Thank you for watching. Thank you.